Hey there, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we're diving into the world of power solutions by showing you some possibilities and options you could use to build your very own custom cable. That's right, building your own cable not only allows you to create the perfect length for your needs, but it ensures you are using top-notch materials. We won't be providing a tutorial, but stick around because we will share pro tips and introduce you to some useful AC Works products along the way. Let's power up. First off, let's talk about why you might want to build your own custom cable. DIY can be better than what you buy. When you create your cable from scratch, you can tailor it to exactly what you need. We're talking custom wire gauge, hand picking the connectors, choosing your desired length, and even choosing whether to use copper or nickel connectors, customizing it to your liking for the best connectivity and durability. Plus, a properly made cable can last a lifetime, and that's a win-win. Now, before we get started, here's what you would need if you were to create your own power cables. For your project, you would need a cable. It could be SOW, SJTW, STOW, STW, PVC, or rubber. We'll explain the differences in a few. Choosing the right cable is important because each wire gauge, or simply put the thickness of the cord, is rated for a certain amount of amps. You would need two connectors, specifically one male and one female. You should never create or use a double-ended cord. Using a double-ended or double-ended male cord is very dangerous. I'm not joking when I say this, it kills. Last but not least, you'd obviously need some basic tools, like a screwdriver, uh, wire strippers, and last but not least, a high quality cable cutter. If you're at this point where you're considering creating your own power cord, then you probably already know what connections you need. For example, we have an EMA 1450. But my welder, because it's kind of on the smaller side, doesn't need 50 amps and has a NEMA L630 plug. So we would get a 1450 male plug, AS1450P, and an L630 female end, part number ASL630R-BK. Before we move on, it may be necessary to consider the kind of connections you need based on the space you have. For example, our 1450 plug is an elbow style. It reduces stress on the cord and it's sleek up against the wall. If you don't already have your connectors, you may be able to find them on our site. When searching on our site for connectors and wiring devices, be sure to use this naming configuration. AS for assembly or wiring device, the NEMA configuration without dashes, and P or R for male and female. Since we know our welder has an L630 plug, we would assume that it would need 7,500 watts and has a running rating of 30 amps at 250 volts. With that being said, because it requires 30 amps, we would need at least a 10 gauge wire. If you're running a cord that is longer than 50 feet and you want to avoid voltage drop, you may want to bump it up to eight gauge. To explain this a little further, longer cords don't always provide consistent power if the wire gauge isn't equipped to power the full length. For example, if you had a water hose, you'd want the max amount of pressure for your sprinkler. If you have a 100 foot hose, the pressure could be significantly less at the end of the hose than at the water spout. This is the same with longer power cords. A lot of our appliances need consistent voltage and amperage, and an inconsistent power cord could make the appliance run less efficiently or even not at all. If you need a little more of an explanation about wire gauge, this graphic shows each wire gauge can service a specific amperage. So if you're trying to power something that needs 30 amps, you wouldn't be able to use a 14 gauge wire that is only capable of up to 15 amps. Now that we have the wire gauge narrowed down, we can pick the cable jacket that we would like. If you were going for ultimate flexibility and max protection against oil and weather, then the best fit would be a SOW rubber cable jacket. To break this down, the S stands for hard service cord with a 600 volt rating, double O, represents oil resistance insulation and outside jacket. The W means that it is weather and water resistant. I've added a graphic on screen to further explain these cable jacket codes. If you want something a little bit cheaper, but still flexible and durable, you could use STW cable jacket made of PVC. This too has a 600 volt rating. Once you have what you need, you can dive into your assembly. When it comes to preparing your plugs, 
You must understand how the plug works when it comes to prongs and the ends giving and receiving power. Some plugs have three and some have four prongs. A lot of people don't know this, but the general idea behind plugs and receptacles is that the receptacle or the female end provides the power to the welder in this case, and the male or plug end needs or is looking to receive the power from the 1450 that we have in the garage. Wiring your connections is pretty much a matching game. Always be sure to match the correct wire to the correct terminal. G for ground, and that's a green wire. W for neutral, and that's white. And depending on the number of hots you have, X and Y, red and black wires. Make sure that X on one end connects to X on the other end, and that Y on one end connects to Y on the other. Again, we're not doing a tutorial, but you would strip the jacket a bit and connect them to the right prong. Secure them by crimping to avoid fraying, and lastly, covering them with a shell or a tightening screw. We've linked the tutorial video here from another channel on YouTube for a step-by-step -step walkthrough. Once you've put everything together, don't forget to check your connections with a multimeter to ensure everything's working correctly. You want peace of mind before you plug this baby in. And there you have it. You've built your very own power cable. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tips and tricks on power solutions. And don't forget to check out the links to the AC Works products we use today in the description below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay powered up.